Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. You know, XRP holders have gone through more than any other crypto community, I think it's fair to say, when it comes to negative price action, from the tremendous FUD put out from Bitcoin Maxos to the SEC going after Ripple, holding through all the ups and downs. Uh, I, I think it's fair to say that we've had it worse than any other crypto community. And it's not to say woe is me, like I'm, I'm an optimistic dude, I feel happy every day, I'm just acknowledging reality, and that is what it looks like to me. But um, I, I, <laughs> a couple things. In terms of XRP, utility matters and will win the day. And so even though it's utility's not going to win the day today or tomorrow, at some point, utility is going to matter. And it, it, in a much more meaningful way than it is the case today, it's going to determine price action. You just you can't have 8,000 cryptocurrencies, which we do have today, uh, you can't have them all exist forever when they don't do anything. So as the asset class matures, uh, money's going to flow where the actual value is. And where's their value? Where a problem solved, where there's utility. And so that's all going to come. But it's just amazing to me that if you just think about the smart contract platform, you know, th think about what Ethereum is positioned to do. Like, Ethereum, like, mind you, I, I hold Ethereum, and I don't know for sure how this is all going to unfold. Like, it's, it's fun to go through this adventure with you and everybody else that's in the crypto sphere. Like, I don't know for sure. But there are legitimate technical hurdles to adoption of, of Ethereum. I think it's, it's fair to cite. Scaling issues, obviously. And, uh, you know, in, in terms of, like, I remember one of the first questions I had when I jumped into uh, the world of crypto. It's just, like, what do you do, like, with Ethereum? If you're not using Ethereum to pay for stuff, uh, like was the original idea for Bitcoin, frankly, like, what do you do with it? And the answer is you can use it to pay for smart contracts. But then you, have the, you might have the question, like, why do I have to pay for it with XRP? Like, why couldn't it just be for with something else of my choosing? And that's kind of solved here. And so with, with Flare Networks, that's why the way I'm looking at this, and I'm not pretending to know everything there is to know, definitely not. I'm definitely much more so in learning mode when it comes to the Spark Token and Flare Network than I am with XRP. But um, like when it comes to the Spark Token, I just I get the sense that it's tremendously under undervalued. And like people, I think so many people are going to be caught off guard when this thing actually starts to get adopted because... It's if it is as promised anyway, because technically I know it hasn't been released yet. But if it is what it's promised to be to this point, like so many of the the big hurdles that you have with other platforms, they're solved. And so I'm sitting here looking at this as I record this video. Uh, the Spark Token IOU is trading at one dollar and forty eight cents. And so because look, mind you, the, the actual blockchain is not released into the wild yet. So. Uh, there's two exchanges I'm aware of on the planet that trade the Spark token IOU. It's just a representation of it. Uh, no blockchain technology behind it. Again, just an IOU. Uh, it'd be BitTrue and Poloniex. And still, the price is up at a buck forty-eight. For a long time, when it was launched, it was at what fifteen twenty cents, and it actually did start creeping up quickly. Uh, if, you know, it, I mean, it's above the price of XRP right now. <laughs> you know, the, the the IOU is. And and so you, you're sitting here wondering, like, if this thing takes hold. Do you really believe that over the long haul, if the if the Spark token is going to be here in perpetuity because it's solving real world problems, do you think that it will be worth more or less than the Spark token IOU is right now at a buck forty eight? And and look to be clear, like I don't have a financial background, I'm not offering financial advice, so don't buy or sell anything because of anything I say. Right? I just think it's fun to talk about this topic, but I have a hard time believing that if it, like if the Spark token ends up being what it's promised to be, like the, the idea of it not being worth substantially more than this IOU is today, like that doesn't compute to me. And so if you're talking about XRP, potentially this market cycle going to over $10, why can't the Spark token uh, ultimately when it's when it's out in the wild, why can't it go to over $10? And, and look, I, I know a lot of you out there, and, and you could be right, have this idea that probably the spark token when it's released it's it's going to have a crash and, and sometimes that happens look i've seen new cryptocurrencies launch on on a number of exchanges like i've been there right when it happens live and i look at the price action and it's like sometimes absurdly high prices are achieved because like the, the very earliest people they just assume it's going to like rally to the moon right then and people pay absurd prices and then it just craters down uh, but even if it does crater down, it doesn't mean it's not going to be worth more in the future. And so I, for, for those of you that think that the, the price is going to crash, you could be right. I don't know. Uh, it might not, though. I, I, I don't know. But, man, I, I just uh, I'm sitting here thinking, my gosh, like we in the XRP community, we've got our XRP. And for everybody that did claim their Spark tokens, it's it's just 
I mean, look at this. It's like, I, I know that these are two different blockchains, but if you add your the price of XRP with the Spark token IOU right now, it's looking pretty good right at this moment. And we haven't even had the bull run with either of these coins yet. And so and when you look at what's actually happened here, like look at this article from Crypto News Flash. Flare secures $11.3 million in latest funding round. Like, it's, it's astonishing to me. It's like, out of all the airdrops that have happened in the history of cryptocurrency, there has never been one like this. Never one that's garnered so much attention and so much support. And here we are in the XRP community, the first to, to be beneficiaries of this. To me, that's mind-blowing. I just think, well, well, good, because we've gone through so much crap. It's about time we get a win, right? It's about time we get a freaking win, right? Um, but, but, but take a look at this. This is astonishing. The amount of support. I'm going to highlight that in this, in this video. Uh, world's first touring complete federated Byzantine agreement, or FBA network for short, a flare, has raised $11.3 million in a recent funding round. The round, held on the 8th of June, attracted several giants, among them venture capital funds. Apart from top-tier firms, several private investors also participated in the financing round. And so think about this. We've got, at, at, at the inception of this, you have over 100 cryptocurrency exchanges saying, yes, we will support the Spark token airdrop. Like, as far as I know, that's unprecedented. I've never seen or heard of anything on that type of scale. At, at inception, over 100 platforms. Uh, and, and not just little ones, not little fly-by-night exchanges. You got some of the biggest cryptocurrency exchanges on the planet supporting this, including Binance and including Coinbase. They're doing it. What? <laughs> like this is this is this is not normal, but it, it's actually happening. Uh, now, part of it uh, is certainly because the XRP community is so big, and uh, I think they recognize there's going to be a lot of volume. But that kind of helps my the, the, to my argument now, because liquidity does matter. On top of the utility, uh, people are going to want to trade and speculate on all of this. Uh, you're talking about a community probably not that far off from the size of the XRP community, or, or at least as of December 2020, the size then that are going to because most most of them I think are claiming it. So. It's going to be massive when it hits. There's going to be a lot of trading. So all of these exchanges, I believe, will ultimately enable trading. Right now, they've only committed to the uh, to the actual uh, airdrop itself. But still, you would think that they'd want to trade at some point in the future. And so you, you see that support right there. You see the fact that even Ripple's behind this. Like, I, I pulled up this article from August 25th, 2020. And this was about the time when we found out that Flare Network was a thing. And I, I first saw it as like a Flare of what a hoodoos? What? And uh, oh, I get free coins, and that's I was like, okay, well, tell me more, I guess. I didn't, I didn't know. Well, you couldn't initially, just how big this thing would get here. And like, so like, here was a quote from Brad Garlinghouse, Ripple CEO, right after the announcement of all this, and he's very for this. From my point of view, Flare is combining the best of XRP, which is very fast settlement, uh, Ethereum, smart contracts, and Avalanche for consensus, which helps extend XRP's utility and allows developers to create smart contracts for new use cases like lending and decentralized finance. And I've, I've got to tell you, Ripple was under no obligation to support this, but they're all for it because it adds utility to XRP specifically. Uh, and then you see this $11.3 million getting poured into, uh, you know, the entity that's running an airdrop. Like this doesn't even, exist. Like, this, this doesn't happen. But, but but yet it did. And so here's a little subheading from this piece from Crypto News Flash. Kinetic Capital leads $11.3 million fundraising. The fundraising was led by Kinetic Capital. Other contributors contributors are Digital Currency Group. Hold, I'm going to pause right there. You realize how massive that is, right? Digital Currency Group. Absolutely massive. I can't remember for sure if they're the largest. They're one of the very largest um, funds for, in like the world of crypto. Um, there's LD Capital, C Fund, Coin Fund, uh, Wave Financial, Backend Capital, and Borderless Capital. Private investors who added to the funds include uh, Du Quan, Litecoin founder Charlie Lee, and Vinny Lingham. Others are ZB Group, DeFi Capital, New Form Capital, and Genesis Capital. Now, look, admittedly, I don't know what most of those funds are, never heard of the vast majority of them, but they're here for a reason. You know, and it, it, look, I understand when you talk about venture capital stuff, a ton of this stuff fails. 
But my gosh, I haven't even seen this much attention garnered for something like this before. So I'm just sitting here as an XRP holder. I'm getting all of this for free, and it's going to be distributed over a span of roughly three years. And I'm just sitting here thinking, how the hell did I get so lucky? Because if this thing really is what it's promised to be, uh, good luck, good luck Ethereum and any other platform that's doing this. <laughs> like, good luck. Um, in fact, take a look at this quote from Bitcoin maximalist Anthony Pompliano. The other day he tweeted out the following. Uh, smart contract platforms are in constant competition to provide greater transaction speeds, lower fees, and more efficiency. The end state is that they will continue to become more centralized over time in order to compete. Centralized products are the most efficient. And so this is one of those tweets where I think, oh, wow, this this is going to age like a fine milk. That, that is exactly what it's going to age like. Mm, 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 old milk. Yes, 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 that's so good. Everybody desires it. Clamoring for the old milk. And so my fellow XRP YouTuber Crypto Eddie retweeted that and wrote the following. This is one of those pomp comments you want to screen capture. Some people go kicking and screaming when change happens. And so I, I don't think that Anthony Pompliano knows anything about Flare Network. Well, with him, it's 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 just it's it's Bitcoin all day, every day. That's it, and nothing else. Like it's it's Bitcoin or bust. And uh, this is not going to be a one blockchain world. It's not going to be a one cryptocurrency world. And so I I think that's not the most sophisticated way to to look at all this. But I think that he and so many others are going to be completely caught off guard when you've got a smart contract platform and it's being powered in part by XRP. And, and, and other cryptocurrencies, too, of course, I understand that. But I'm, I'm just saying XRP is going to be the biggest one to start. And, and, and look at in terms of the blazing fast speed and uh, almost no transaction fees. Like, like it's, it's incredible. It's like fractions of a penny for a transaction here. Like uh, like Ethereum, who's a what's a? Like, is, are people going to remember that in the future? It'll be in history books, maybe. I mean, if that's if this works, though, it's if it's as promised, which is admittedly a question mark here. But um I have a hard time believing that that amount of money, $11.3 million, would flow in if there weren't the chance for this, because I just don't see this generally happening, uh, not for an airdrop. And I, I don't think Ripple would be as excited as they're saying the things that they are. You've got David Schwartz and all sorts of others talking about this. Like They don't have to support this, and especially when you talk about David Schwartz, who's Ripple CTO and uh, co-creator of XRP and the XRP Ledger. Like He speaks his mind. He's pretty frank when it comes to the tech stuff here. I just I, I don't think that these people would be that supportive. And so I'm sitting here um, thinking when utility takes hold and th that matters and that drives price, what the hell is this going to look like? If, if the Spark token is still be, if it's being used once it's launched and still being used like a decade or two from now, what is that even going to look like? Because already at this point, you're talking about a buck 48. And I know, again, fine, it's the IOU. But there's almost there's almost no participants in the world of crypto as a percentage of the human population. And we're already seeing these prices. As a percentage of the human population, uh, how many people have ever held crypto? Like 1.5% or something of, of humans on the planet at any point in time? It's, it's like, it's, I don't remember, it, I think it's something like that. If I'm wrong, I apologize, but I, I think it's somewhere around there. It's almost nobody. But that's going to be a much bigger number, especially as venture capital firms and, uh, and, and hedge funds and all the big money continues to jump into the space. This, 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 the market size today at, at about $1.5 trillion, it's going to look like nothing. It's going to be substantially bigger in the future. And so now you've got XRP, which has utility. So as long as it continues to solve a problem, I think that will have staying power. And then you're talking about the Spark token gifted to XRP holders if they want to claim it anyway. Uh, and if they were holding XRP uh, in December of, uh, on the right, during the snapshot date, December of 2020. Like, my gosh. Could there actually be two winners right there? I'll tell you what, it'll be worth going through all the crap we've gone through if we get two big winners like that. And, and I'll tell you what, uh, the, the, the Spark token also, allegedly it's going to be launched within the next several weeks or so. Allegedly, we'll see if, because I, I haven't seen anything more recent uh, a prediction in terms of uh, you know getting out into the wild than that. that. The last time Flare Networks that I'm aware of talked about that, it was in April of this year. So if, if it's going to come out here, like it could participate this market cycle in the bull run. Now that would be something, I know we only get a certain percentage of our total holdings, the rest of it's distributed over three years, but damn, I'm sitting there thinking like, do I want to sell any of it if that happens? I don't know, maybe if it's the right price, I'll tell you if I do, but I, I, maybe I would, I don't know. But I'm, it's basically like forced hodling for the rest of it. So maybe that's okay, maybe that's okay. <laughs> take, take a little bit of profit. 
Uh, I don't know. You let me know what you think, but I'm, I'm excited about this to see what happens and what, what it's going to do to the competitive landscape here. Uh, all good things in time, right? I'm not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Lambo.